Welcome back to the Audio Lag Show. I cannot be happier to see uh, my next guest here, not only alive, but kicking ass, looking good. My friend uh, from Jackass, from Wild Boys, you know him from everything, Steve-O. Steve, what's up, man? I'm just doing great, man. <laughs> and uh, I just got done with a show over at Caroline's. That's and... right, you're doing stand-up. Yeah, dude. You know, I first tried stand-up... Uh... Shoot, almost seven years ago now. Right. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I dabbled in it here and there. I would just like do lots of drugs and then show up at the, <laughs> show up at the Laugh Factory. I remember showing up at the Laugh Factory, getting on stage, saying, "I don't know if it's the 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 speed, the Xanax, <laughs> the grass, or the booze, but I feel great." You know, and, like you got a big reaction. You know. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah. The problem is that you got to do like another thirty minutes. Or... <laughs> No, I did like 11. And... For, all, for all you've done, like the crazy stuff you've done, is stand-up <laughs> scary to you? It, at first, the beginning it was, right? Sure. Right. I mean, that first time, there was this guy, he asked me to go to the Laugh Factory in L.A. Uh, he said, dude, come on down and get on stage and do something crazy, man. It was like his <laughs> night, he was hosting it, he was like trying, right. trying to get me to work for free, and, yeah. you know. So I was like, yeah, sure, man. And I showed up thinking, like, okay, well, I gotta go do a stunt tonight. I had no idea what I was gonna yeah, do. Yeah, if the guy tells you to do something crazy, he's really opening up Pandora's box. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea what I would do, but uh, <laughs> so I so I so I showed up and I walked in and I looked around and it, and it just came, it just hit me right away. I, like it was just obvious to me. I thought there's nothing I could possibly do on that stage that would be crazier than me trying stand up. <laughs> and that was what I did, you know. Right, I was like, exactly. and, and and to answer your question, yeah, terrified. Yeah, I was terrified. I was like. It was just, you know, I'm like, dude, oh, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, ah, ah, ah. Right. And, and I just kind of sat around waiting for my turn. And, um, like, uh, I was just thinking of what I could say to try and get laughs. I came up and someone came out and said, like, hey, everybody, I'm in the mood for a BJ. Anybody want one? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, when you say that, it might happen. <laughs> well, you, you, yeah, so I, I heard, I'm, I'm kind of friendly with Dane Cook, and sure, I heard yeah. that you were working with him. He sort of mentored you a he little did. bit. Yeah. He did. He did. And that wasn't until what I was talking about just now was, was way back. Before but, but, that. But, but uh, when, you know, after I got sober, all of a sudden, you know, I don't want to be messing around with going to, like, really bars or clubs. And I don't want any part of that, like, like a, a appearance to go host the night, the night club and stuff. Right. But, like, it does, it, it, I found, like, I found it, like, my, my, myself really feeling at home in comedy clubs. I'd go more and more. And the more I sat in the comedy clubs, I was just thinking, man, you know, I got to be, I was doing it and I was having a good time. And I got to, I got to be back up there. I got to get up there. I had no idea that, <laughs> that like, how it would actually turn out. But then I, I did a, an interview. I walked in, it was Dane Cook, and I told him, like, yeah, man, you know, I did stand up a couple of times. I want to get into it. He says, dude, next week, you know, improv, we'll get you on there. Yeah, he's a good so, guy. I mean, he, he is. He'll he really definitely is. help people out, right? So I spent the next week writing and writing, going to this open mic and writing and, you know, like the whole deal. And I did it, didn't, did the set, you know, like I, I felt like it went pretty well. I sat down with Dane after, you know, the deal. I went and he went. And uh, he sat down, he says, I'm not sending it back to the drawing board. Right. Which is like a big compliment. <laughs> Definitely. He's like, you know, he's like, she's got to work on this and that. And he's, he's a good right guy to, me to mentor you because he's a physical comic and, you know, and definitely a guy that, a little nutty on stage. And sure. It's a good, it's a, yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta say, man, I, um, in, um, in the fall of 2010, when Jack Gas 3 was coming out, you guys were making the rounds, and I was in Rio. That was, that was when this went down, too. Oh, oh really? Okay, with Dane. It was, it was specifically the month before that movie dropped. That first week, I went up on a Wednesday at the Improv, then Friday and Saturday, and all three nights, it was me, then Dane, and then he sat down and gave me notes after each performance. Well, that's, why I, re that's why I remember this, because I was in rehab at the time, and I was really at like one of the lowest points of my life. I just detoxed, and I had a bunch of relapses, and I hadn't been on Howard in about... 10 months, and um, uh, the, the, one of the counselors at rehab, I was down in Florida, he said, hey, you want to go uh, take a run? We're going to um, uh, pick up some stuff at the supermarket. And he picked three of the guys in the rehab to go, and we go there, and he had serious, and he said to me, he goes, oh, you mind if we put Howard on? Is that going to be weird for you? I'm like, nah, fine. And you were the guest. Uh -huh. So we, we, you were promoting Jackass, and we, it was like something from God. Just as we put the interview on, you know, Howard does those hour-long interviews, and you're always the best. I, I, for years, I always said this on the show, I said, my favorite guest is Steve-O, because he came on and, and said, Howard, I'm not here to waste your time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Which is, so many people People wasted our time. That was I, the best thing. I heard. Uh, I heard. I heard you quote me with that and quote. Oh, really? So many times, and it, it just warmed my heart, man. <laughs> no, it was. Warmed it, my heart. It was Dude, the I've best. always, 
I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I love you, man. No, I, no, I, I love you. Yeah, you Steve. Know? I listen. I, I'm. And so, so you guys are listening to we're serious listening to the show. And and um and you said. Uh, Hey, I just I'm doing stand up. You, yeah. you said you're doing stand up. I want to do a gig tonight. And uh, and you said, hey, by the way, how is how is Artie? You said right, that. Right. And I would say, you know, we hear things, blah blah blah, back and forth. And you said to him, and everybody, and there's three guys in rehab that we and it's you talking. And uh, Howard said, you said to Howard, you know, you know what helped me kind of clean up. Yeah, last well, time I'll, I'll never said, forget the time, time <laughs> when he was like, and I'm sorry to inter interrupt you. No, right? go ahead, yeah. I, I said, Howard, I'll never forget the time when I came in here and I was like at death's door, <laughs> and you were like, dude, you, you, and you told me, Howard, that like my buddies Bam and Johnny were in in their back. Back to back, saying that you were had like maybe like like a, a, a few months <laughs> to live, and I said, "Come on, Howard! Come on, Howard! What do you who, who do you who do you think is gonna gonna live longer, me or Artie?" <laughs> and Howard said, "Artie is definitely gonna gonna outlive you." And I was like, whoa. Yeah, and you told that story. I think he said, I think he said, he said, Steve-O, you don't stand a chance of outliving Artie. <laughs> <laughs> so and that, he, you said, that helped me clean up. And I said, the, but yeah, so, you know, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in rehab, <laughs> go to the supermarket, everyone in the car is laughing their ass off. <laughs> and they're looking at me like I'm a god. I'm like, you helped Steve-O clean up. But wow. there was one time in, in particular where we, I was out in L.A. and we were backstage at some stupid Right, it's like TV's Guys Choice Awards. Something like that, yeah. And, well, I was talking to you, Steve, and I don't know what you were on, but I was all messed up. I was gone, and I was on opiates. You were like, your, you could almost see like in the Bugs Bunny card thing, it was like your heart coming out of your chest. Right, 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 right. You were talking a mile a minute, and, I'm talking, and I was with my buddy who was concerned about me, and when you left, I said to my friend, I said, I feel terrible. Like, I, I said, I want to take him to the hospital. <laughs> like, like, I almost said, I right. said, I want to hug him and take him to the hospital. And my buddy said, uh, you know what, Art? Why don't we just do a double thing? Because I want to take you to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I drive your boat? <laughs> But, you know, but but so so when I really like you know I was I, a guy like me was worried about you to hear that you got better and are sitting here in front of me like this it really is great man. Well, thanks, and it's, man. It's, it's, now so take us through that a little bit like what was the I know Johnny and the guys Johnny sure, they, they stepped in pulled an intervention on me right and you know it's just hilarious man you know you got a serious problem when, <laughs> when, when your interventionist is Johnny Knoxville <laughs> like you were too um, nuts for them well right yeah. and they, you know they they locked him in a psychiatric ward and, and uh, I mean I was so belligerent when I when I when I realized that this wasn't a situation I was going to calmly talk my way out of you know right like, right you can't do it I had been essentially promising to like a attempt to take my own life yeah. in email, mass emails. I know, man. I was watching. And, I saw that documentary. You did. Right, oh. and and, uh, and, and so they printed out these emails, took me to the hospital. They had me. They had me. But I'm thinking I'm going to get to the hospital. I'm going to explain this is a misunderstanding, and uh, you know. I get there, I realize that I'm not gonna get out of it. And I just start throwing down, I'm gonna smoke a cigarette now. <laughs> you know, I'm like I go to pick up a chair and like throw it, and then all of a sudden, like these like this like pack of security guards just comes out of nowhere, grabs me, slams me down on this table, oh. and 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 they, and, uh, and someone jams a, a, a needle into my butt cheek, and like I just a you or something. Yeah, 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 like it was an instant nap. Right, you know? right. I know. Like, Sometimes you, you think about that Ramon song. I want to be sedated. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Whatever was in that needle that they stuck in my butt cheek and like really worked. Man. Yeah. Because I was just, you know, <laughs> I just took a nap. No, in and psych then, wards, I bet they have stuff that works pretty quick. Right. And yeah, big time, man. So I, so I woke up from my nap and uh, I was introduced to the part of the hospital where like the doors don't open at all, you know? Yeah. And they have. Was this at Cedar Sinai, by the there way? There was. Thousands. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I spent, I spent three days there. I know, but but I was such a belligerent schmuck. Yeah. They changed. The, they, I got I, I got I got hauled in on what's called 5150, which is what you had. Yes, so absolutely. It's yeah. a 72 hour involuntary psychiatric hold. I had to be there but, for 72 hours. But my chair throwing and, and such, earned, <laughs> they, they, they they switched me from 5150 to 5250. They tacked on more time. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, I, I, so I, I had to get out of there after three days. But oh, dude, I, I would have loved to have gotten out of there after three days. Yeah. I probably wouldn't be sober today. Dave, it was right. So know? now, so you did the two weeks there. And then well, you were, yeah, it was like, what did you do after that? You know, it, it was. I was sitting in there thinking, I know what they want me to say, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know, right. 
Then, the, you know, I don't want to be careful how I, how, I, how I talk about this, but a few guys just came in who were just sober dudes and they just came in to go help, you know, like tell their stories kind of deal. And I wouldn't have listened to a word these guys had to say. I just wouldn't have listened to a word of it if I wasn't logged up in a psychiatric ward. Right. So I go on there and they start talking about how, you know, we're like, we're, we're alcoholics and drug addicts and, you know, like we're just going to tell you like what happened to us. And, and, I, and I knew that they weren't like, BSing me because you know you just like yeah you yeah, know? yeah these weren't guys that I would like want to like uh, they weren't guys that really like would have hung out with mm -hmm. but I knew that they weren't lying to me and then they just kind of talked about how bad everything got and then like what happened they you know they hit bottom whatever and then like just like what their life was like sober and like you know I just like. I got it, you know, and I was like, I, I had like really worked hard to convince myself that there was, that I was past the point of help, that it was, that it was impossible and that, and, and it was just like, all right, well that, like, you know, I just, I felt like nothing could be done. Like I was a write off and then. then yeah, and that's where I started to feel, you started to get that hopeless feeling. Okay, I'm just gonna be one of those sure. stories where I just never made it, you know? Right, you know, but the thing is, dude, on some weird level, like hopelessness is like a prerequisite for. for you gotta get there, man. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like you find hope in your hopelessness, you know? Like it's kind of weird. But in any case, I just believed what these guys were talking about and then. I just, you know, it just, I just had a moment of clarity. I was just like, dude, you know, I got to do this thing. I got to do what they were telling me about. And, and, I, and I just said to the, to the people at the psych ward, I said, you know, hey, guys, like, you can let me out now because uh, I'm ready to go to rehab and I don't want to some time to think about it. I don't need to go pack a bag. Like, you can just take me to rehab. That intervention know? thing where they write the letters and stuff, I can bypass all yeah, that. Dude, I'm, I think I'm that's... going. I'm ready. You know, I yeah. got to get out. But, you know, when, when they you, write the letters, I just think it's all pretty silly. Yeah, I, think yeah. they, I think they should go straight to the bottom line. If you don't, then we're going to... Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the, those letters, like, for, for people, uh, fortunately, you're fortunate if you don't know this, but a standard intervention is to have your family and friends write letters to you. And if you don't agree to go immediately to rehab, they break they out start, their bottom line. Oh, they break out the letters and, you know, the uh, the ultimatums, or you're cutting right. you off, we're not going to be your friend or your family anymore. Yeah, anymore. Well, and then you, I, I, I had the same thing. I just didn't want to hear the letters. I'm like, just get right. me out of here. But yeah, but I, so it wasn't like I, I didn't have letters, but uh, I, you know, I was in the psych ward. I, I just said, you know, you can tell. And I went door to door to rehab. I got there and I said, hey, whatever. Uh Whatever the average time, like someone comes here to, to, to rehab to get sober, like I just want, I want to stay longer, you right. know? I, mean, I wanted because I, I want to do this right. I want to get this right the first time. It's amazing I, though. I only want to do this once, and they said, well, we don't, we don't really recommend that you stay really long. We just recommend you stay here for 30 days, and then you go into a sober living. And I don't know where the willingness came from, man. Yeah, well, I did. You know, I took an honest look at what I had turned into, <laughs> and I was pretty horrified, you know, like. Like I, I had, like the, the fact is that I, I genuinely humiliated myself into reasonableness, you right. know, and I just desperately didn't want, didn't want to be that guy anymore. And, and I, you know, I wound up staying in that sober living house and, until I had two years of sobriety. Wow. So I stayed, that, so I was scrubbing, that's a commitment. Man. I was scrubbing toilets. I was peeing in a cup twice a week at random. Uh, I was, uh, wow. whatever, home by curfew, up with my bed made by 9 a.m., you know, like the whole deal. Now, do you had the thing, uh, I think I saw in the documentary, too, where after three months you had, like, you went through a rough path. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's when the depression that, hits. That, right? well, like, well, that, that honest look I took at what I had turned into, like, oh, uh, God. you know, it was weird. Like, you know, you get in, like, and you get people sort of, other people, People who have more experience with it and they're helping you out and it's kind of like you know the 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 them this guy helping me out it was sort of like he held up a mirror and uh and i got to see myself right. like with, with some clarity and i didn't like what i saw in that mirror man and and, and i wound up like yeah i wound up going to psych ward number two with a uh, hundred days of sobriety wow and, and uh with a hundred days of sobriety with a hundred days, days of sobriety I, sh I, I showed up at the psych ward i was like you know what i feel like i hate myself and i don't want to live Wow. You know, oh, man. and so then I'm in that second psych ward, and I'm writing in this journal that I had. I, I, I'll never forget. <laughs> I'm writing there. I'm, I'm writing. I, I, write, I write like the date. It was like June twentieth something Whatever, of, yeah. of uh, 2008, and I wrote. I know there are, are a lot of people who love me, <laughs> but I'm just not one of them. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, dude, I went through all that. Like, you start to get the sappy, like, letters yeah. to yourself. You know, and... like, uh, you know, spending all the time thinking about killing myself, and if this is exactly where I'm supposed to be, <laughs> I'm in a freaking psych ward. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I went through a thing. Yeah, I, I, played, I, I was in a Scrabble game at a psych ward, and a woman was uh, yelling at a guy for not having the proper spelling of a word. And I, I felt like going to her, like, in a, in a moment of man. She's like, oh, sweetheart, we're in a psych ward playing Scrabble. It's over, okay? Like, let's just get let's just get this done and get <laughs> get to the next group meeting that I'm not going to listen in because you're just killing time right now. Right. You know? But uh, so you but you know the good thing about that is you didn't use at that point. Like, I did. Went, no, you yeah. Know, I mean, you could have just to numb that pain of looking at yourself right, in the mirror. Right. You know that's a major step forward. I remember having pretty strong. Like I don't know if I was ever really suicidal. To be honest, I think I was just in that sort of loser at life and loser at death stage right. where you can't kill yourself, yeah. but you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even succeed in that. No, because I, I tried it once and wrote a note the whole thing, but I was I was coming down from coke and uh, I. I found out through therapy that I was never truly suicidal. I don't it was, think I was suicidal. It was the at drug. All. I mean, because look, if, if you're really honest about it, you'll, you'll just, you know, get a gun and go like right. this. There'll be no, but. Uh, right. And a lot of people do do that, but unfortunately. Oh, dude, dude, I looked up the stats at one point. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Like one in. Uh, I, I wanted, I, I wanted like two hundred thousand people do it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it, because there's ways to just ensure you're gonna die. You know, jump off, you know, the sure. Empire State Building, you're gone. Sure. Uh, you know, pills, trying to hang yourself, something could happen. It's pretty rare. The person, know. the person that, that actually kills themselves is a pretty rare son bitch. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God. Uh, <laughs>